We're Alive is brought to you by Reef Systems, Inc. has been in business for over 25 years. Their clients include such businesses as Quicksilver, Bass Pro Shops, the Hyatt Hotels, and even the Department of Fish and Game. They specialize in custom aquariums from 100 gallons to 20,000 gallons and have traveled all over the United States delivering that service. For all your fish tank needs, contact Rick Barboza or Martin Kendrick at Reef Systems, Inc., 714-751-FISH. That's 714-751-3474. We're Alive, a story of survival. Chapter 3, The New Arrivals, Part 3 of 3. Hey, uh, pass me another hot dog, would you? Yeah. After this one, we should probably put it out. Get some rest. Nothing's gonna see us up here. Starting to get chilly up here. How's he doing? Still out cold. And still clutching his revolver. I would be too. Kidding me? You can stop damn near anything with that pistol. Hey, uh, I'm sorry about earlier. How's that? If we hadn't have saved him, we wouldn't have been able to get any of these weapons. How about we wouldn't have saved an old man's life? Why does it have to be about how useful someone is? You hear that? Hear what? I thought I heard... Oh! Oh God, he's got my leg! I can't get through the angel's head! Fucking gross, man! Holy shit, that was close! Thing scaled up the wall. Damn, tore through my uniform a bit, but I'm alright. I'm alright. Nice shot, Angel. Didn't, didn't get any blood on me for a second there. I... It wasn't me. Even half dead, I can still bury him like the best. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Gramps to the rescue. If you keep calling me that, I'm gonna miss next time. Hey, hey, take it easy. Just relax. Lay back down. How the hell did it get up here? I closed the ladder lock. Must have. Now, move aside a sec. Let me see it. Yep. It's one of them smart ones. Smart ones? Yeah. Some of them are different. You gotta look out for those fuckers. One of them, I think it may be. That one there, lying there, trapped me in the bathroom. It just waited for me to come out. Waited too long, I guess. Must have lost interest after I passed out. Why didn't you just shoot him at the door? I mean, you're one hell of a shot. He had others with him. Seemed like he told the other ones what to do. So how could you tell this one was smart? Looks like all the others. Oh, it's it's not what's on their face or anything like that, but it's what they're wearing. You see that badge clipped to his belt? That's a level 3 ID for Radon Labs. Must have been pretty damn smart to get that badge. So what you're saying is... I'm guessing. But it seems to me that the smarter you are in life, the smarter you are in death, too. I mean, well... You know what I mean. How'd you figure all that out? I was in that room for a pretty long time. Lots of opportunity to think things over and listen to them outside the door. Uh, Thank you, by the way. Forgot to mention that. No problem. Yeah, it was no problem. Here, Bert. Read the inside. Get your strength back. So did you uh, open my little treasure chest? Yeah. We loaded up what we could fit. Where did all that shit come from? (laughs) Been collecting it for years. I thought that that Y2K thing was a takeover. Never thought I'd ever have to use any of that shit. Did you get that uh, polished silver pistol on the back wall? Hell yeah. The Desert Eagle? That thing's pretty. It's my favorite, too. Just glad they didn't get it. The Riders? Yeah. Somebody got to my shop before I could get there. Somebody who knew what they were doing. How's that? Well, they opened my wall safe without drilling, which means they'd done it before. 
Only I had the combo. Shame, too. I had some of my better pieces in there. They didn't get into your second vault, though. Lucky for us. They'd have to have been absolute pros to open that one, or we'd have some serious drills. <laughs> well, I think it's time that we put out the fire so nothing else knows we're up here. We need to make sure we're rested heading back in the morning. Where are we going? Meeting up with the rest of your unit? Hmm. We only have one other soldier left, so it's us. Damn. We're held up in a tower with a few survivors. Sol and I were sent out for supplies. Oh, and uh, your name is... Angel. Nice to meet you, sir. Gunnery Sergeant Bert Scott. Uncle Sam's misguided children. Retired, of course. What? Marine Corps, newbie. See, now I can call you Gunny instead of Gramps. You'd better, too. Or you can just call me Bert. Whatever works. All right, well, we'll talk about this more in the morning. Lights out for now. Stars sure are beautiful tonight. Never been able to see them in the city before. How's that? Well, it's hard to see with all the lights everywhere. Now that people are gone, it seems like nature's starting to take back over again. In more ways than one. A lot's gonna change now that there are so few of us and so many of them. You're enjoying the hell out of this, aren't you? Well, sometimes it's not fun owning a gun and never having anything to shoot at. All of a sudden, I have a purpose. It's like Nam all over again. Well, good night, fellas. Make sure you say your prayers. Especially the part that says, if I should die before I wake. Oh, thanks. Just had to say that, right? Now I'm going to be up all night. Perfect. It's hoping it for us to look out. <laughs> Happy hunting. Angel, wake up. God, the sun's barely up. Why are, why are you? You need to come see this. What? Put your voice down. Holy shit. We're surrounded? What are they doing? They're sleeping. Weird, huh? Must have come here in the middle of the night. Maybe they heard the shot. How many of them? About 20 or so. Maybe more. Can we make it down to the Hummer? Or are you able to walk? Yeah, don't have much of a choice now, do I? Not really. We can't carry you down like we were able to hoist you up. Well, I'm a bit wobbly, but I, I think I can do it. Come on. Go through the hatch. Bert, you first. I see you got my generator. Didn't even ask. Didn't think we had to. Take my rifle. Got it. Shit! Oh. Damn it! Help! Hey, I broke something! Come on! Hold on! Come on! Hurry! Get in! Before what? I think we're all good. Take your time. Not bad for an old man. Is that what you're thinking? You got them all? Well, we have the element of surprise. <laughs> and you fucking rock. Don't forget that. And you wanted to leave him behind. Wait, you... It, you it, what? It wasn't that... Uh, it wasn't that... I don't have that many rounds left. Hurry, Saul, get in. Hand me Shirley. I'll stay in the turret. Who's Shirley? Just hand me my silver one.
How much farther is it? Not too far now. Great, because I'm getting hungry again. That's a good sign. Grab one of those bars in my backpack. Oh, wait. Wait a sec, Saul. Is that... There's a car moving over there. They're headed towards us. More survivors. Wait. It kind of looks like... Michael and Lizzie. It is them. have you been? Been up late, worried sick, Dad? Shut your fucking mouth, Saul. Easy, Michael. We got stuck out here. Whatever happened to going to Thompson's Market if you have to stay out? We couldn't find you. Michael and I have been driving around all night looking for you. We found a survivor that needed aid. By the time we were done, it was too... Fine, whatever. Load up and follow us to the tower. What's wrong? Is everything okay? Let's hope so. The tower was alone for the first time without any of its soldiers there to hold it up. I didn't know what to expect when we got back there. I'd grown somewhat attached to our little group and worried we might be a little too late. Peg's sign could be seen from far away, leading us back to the others. We're alive? What? The sign on the building. We're alive. That the best they could come up with? Well, hopefully that's still true. Oh, shit. Look at all of them. Build a swarm. Holy shit. What did they do while we were gone? We need to find some way to draw them away from the building. I have an idea. I wasn't talking to you. All due respect, Buck Sergeant, but I think this might work. I think you should listen to the gunny. Here, catch. You know how to work one of these things? Well, the hell did you get a claymore? Set it up, and then we'll draw him out. Where'd you get this guy from? <laughs> Got him. Keep working. It's set. That should be far enough. Now just start honking. Michael, what is that thing? It's a claymore, an anti-personnel mine. It sends out hundreds of balls pushed out by explosives. Basically, it'll turn them into mush. That's going to be really loud. It's going to bring more here. There's already so many, it's worth the risk. Come on, you sons of bitches. Here they come. Hey, get through here! You see that shit? I love that sound. Move towards the tower. Saul, take the vehicles to the parking garage. Angel and, um, Gunny, you come with me. Take Saul. I busted my foot. I'll take it to the garage. There. He's down. Get inside. find our friends. Join us again in two weeks for the next chapter of We're Alive. And now a word from our sponsors. 
Elisa Elliott is an acting coach in Los Angeles with a degree in drama from Yale University. She gives private acting lessons, group acting classes, and industry coaching in L.A. to beginners, professionals, children, and adults. Her one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions are great if you are just starting out, preparing for an audition, or want to fine-tune your skills. Elise has kept her classes small to give you an intimate opportunity to work with and learn from other talented actors while still benefiting from one-on-one -on -one coaching. Her goal is to give you the personal attention, acting techniques, and career guidance that you need to reach your full potential as an actor. For more information or to schedule a free consultation, contact her at 310-230-5233. To find out more or become a sponsor, visit www.thezombiepodcast.com or free on the iTunes store, keyword, We're Alive. Starring Jim Gleason, Nate Gies, Shane Salk, Claire Doden, Elisa Elliott, Jay Oligario, Manly Woods, Blair Byhauer, Nico Marvin, and Tammy Klein, featuring Michael Swan. Written and directed by Casey Wayland. Associate producer, Jason Scott. Print editor, Blythe Hill. Composers, Katie Wayland and Ron Gallagher. Producer, Shane Salk. Casey Wayland. This has been a Wayland production. We could remove them from this. What is going on, everybody? My name is Tony Ray, and welcome to Apartment 2C. It is 7.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and my name is Tony Ray. That's right, I'm Tony Ray. Welcome to Apartment 2C. How'd you like that episode? I thought it was great. Today's guest is Blair Wayland and Augie Wayland, and of course, Casey Wayland. Round of applause. I'll have what, apparently I'll have what you're having. Wow. You scared the baby this, when you started. I scared the baby. Oh, I'm sorry, baby. You're so loud. Grayson was huge. He just like well, came I'm just I'm just trying to match wait, great who? Oh, I mean Tony oh, Ray. Oh Tony Ray, I'm yeah. To Tony my, Ray, I'm so. just trying to match my usual uh, Sorry energy. Anthony. Sorry, Anthony. Uh Tony. Tony. Oh, Tony. Tony. I go by sorry. Tony. Uh, go as by you can Tony. see uh, by my titles here, credits there, I am Tony Ray. You can tweet at me at Tony Ray. And for everyone who's watching Throughout the whole episode tonight, uh, if you want to ask us questions, any questions you have about the show, about our guest, about our guest's <laughs> guest, we got kind of a two guest, 2.1 guest going on, uh, just he, send us messages. He's a point one? What? He's, he's a, a point person. one? I mean, he's like, how much percentage of a full uh, what, human being? 100. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> he's a whole person. He's a tiny. <laughs> he's a tiny. All right. He's like, yeah. That's a good-sized baby. But look, he can almost stand. And can almost stand. <laughs> we'll be so, doing this all day long. Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, no, my name is not Tony Ray. My name is Grayson Stone. Uh, I'm usually not the host, but Tony Ray is out of town. I'm taking his place, and uh, I'm trying to do my best. I got Tony's tattoo. I committed to the role, and we're going to see how go this goes. So That's where he gets all his power. So I'm sure it is. Nailed it. Yeah, and You're I guess that... You're going to be so powerful. Uh, anyway. So how about that episode, Casey? Tony would have liked that joke. <laughs> I don't know if he would have. <laughs> he would have liked the effort. Yeah, he would have rewarded a little bit. Um, cool. Okay, so now with so, the pity yeah. clap. Uh, <laughs> that episode, it was pretty much just Saul, Bert, and Angel. Well, and going back to Angel, he was just... Again, being a turd. Tony hates Tony hates Angel. I'm trying to live up to that. I'm trying to follow in Keep, Tony's... Keeping it moving. Yeah, and also, god damn, that Grayson guy always screwing up backstage. I cannot believe him, but oh, it's man. all right. It's okay. Um, I got something for this episode, too. I got a couple things. Yeah, what you got? Uh, okay, so one of my big things that uh, I can reveal this episode is that Bert, when he was originally coming into the show... Yeah was uh, going to be Native American. Like, that was his, that okay. was his angle, was he was a, a, a Native American gun shop owner, and that was his, that sort of was his, his character archetype. And then um, when we had auditions, I never found anybody who had that, like, authenticity. It was, it's very, very difficult role. Imagine Bert 
also is a like gruffly old yeah. like yeah, 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 very yeah. very difficult so to were cast. there a lot of people coming in who weren't native american but trying out for the native american role or was it just people trying themselves out in, in i the role? i kind of didn't uh cap it off at what whoever wanted to audition yeah. I, I needed casting old grumbly old men very very hard to do <laughs> because like a lot of them that do come in are really old and crotchety and you just don't want to work with them you got then, you got what you got like santa and who else you got? What other grumbly old men? We had you a got lot Scrooge of, and like, Scrooge McDuck. Oh, well, there's there's Glenn. Yeah, Glenn comes later, but Glenn was not. That's true. Yeah, Glenn. No, I'm saying, like like Glenn has all those stereotypical. Oh yeah. He gets homeless guy and he plays God and Santa and all those. And roles. for those who watching who don't know, Glenn uh, in oh. I'd say the comes up later. He comes up later, yes, but <laughs> Glenn, like the actual actor, the real human being in our world, in our universe, uh, on Earth, uh, he gets a lot of roles at uh, in Orange County, I would say, or City of yeah, Orange. He's and been gets, in so many Chapman films. Like yeah. I think his total running total. Right now, because he just he hangs out in the lobby and like waits for students to be like, I need to cast an old guy, and he just <laughs> and he's there. He's right there. I think his current total is like fifty four or something like that. Like it's astronomical. And I've I've seen him in so many things. Like we, have, he, I think you had him in one of your films, didn't you? I I've had him in a couple things. Um, I think I had him do something for Sopor that I didn't use. Okay. Um, but I was going to have him in there. Um, so, yeah. So, he did work with me a little bit in the past. But really cool guy. Really, really awesome. Uh, <laughs> loved him in this role coming up in We're Alive way down the line. But we'll get to that later. Yeah. Well, then we're going to get to that. Who's uh, Glenn? There's no Glenn. Uh, more about Bert. Yeah. Um, w one of the big things. There's two, there's two inspirations for Bert, really, that uh, I can really call back on. Uh, one of them is my dad because he was an old Vietnam vet. And his experiences, actually, a lot of them, I just took from his stories. You tell me and kind of merge them together, make them work um, with uh, kind of the story and, and make sure that like there had some authenticity. Because uh -huh. one of the things about like especially with Bert and like the Vietnam War and things like that is that it'd be really hard to make up, but it's really easy just to copy the truth. So it's one of those areas that's like okay. I like to base a lot of we're live off of true things and more or less because it's easier to do that rather yeah. than having to make something up from from nothingness is actually much more difficult. Uh, I got some more. Unless you got more, you want? I, I mean, Blair was talking earlier, and during while the episode was playing, who, oh, oh, you're <laughs> oh, in the yeah, spotlight the now. Spot. <laughs> you're in the spotlight. Uh, uh, comments. Oh, I pointed out. Oh, yeah, I pointed out thing. something. Something about Bert that yes. Blair backed up. Uh, <laughs> okay. About his. Um, yeah, he has an accent for just maybe three words. Yeah, three or four words in the episode, episode, and then not throughout the rest of the series. No, nope. I yeah. thought it was interesting. Just he, what did he say? That, it was like... Oh, I forget. Smart ones. Smart. Smart, smart. ones. Smart. Yeah. Some of them are smart but, ones. But then later he has... I, f I didn't catch the, the word, but he has a, a word that he says right after another. He says it twice, in, kind of in a row. Yeah. And the first one, he skips the R, and the <laughs> second one, he pronounces <laughs> it. It's one of those things it's, was like, it's, it's really a hard honest. accent. He was like, he was learning it at the same time, and it took a lot of, like, just exercises to do Bert, and, like, he finally... Uh, I think I think he got the the hang of it after like maybe an episode or two, but it was a little. Uh, well, he he didn't end up hanging hanging on to that accent. He doesn't hang on. No. End up hanging on to the accent. He keeps obviously the gruff voice, but uh, the accent he yeah, I guess I, becomes more Western, more California. I think uh, I think may I think there might have been a note for me to like just make it more casual, it. more <laughs> more uh, easygoing, just to make because it's already a lot to focus on. Like because I'm yeah. giving Marv the directions of like okay, you're half dead. You're barely withered, and oh, by the way, you have an incredibly gruff voice. This is one of your first appearances, and go. And you're from the East Coast, and you're Native American, <laughs> and uh, all the you things. might be slightly German and British as well. Can you just blend that all up for us? <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> and, uh, well, obviously, we, we cut the Native American part out. Yeah. We just made him, uh, made him the good old-fashioned Bert that he is today. That we um, did, you, did you already talk about how you found him? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, how did we find him? He was in the army with Casey. Yeah, Marv and I. I well, these are stories I, I we can bring up again when he comes on. But yeah. uh, like Marv and I, uh, we were part of the same unit in uh, overseas, and he and I just uh, we worked for AFN uh, and set up Freedom Radio in Iraq. And he was one of the people who was there helping me. Um, he was one of the broadcaster sides, and I was one of the technician sides. And we just formed a bond and and just kept in touch over the years and. 
I knew he could do a lot of voices, so when I talked to him, I was like, look, I have this project coming up called We're Alive. I don't know exactly how you can fit into it, but I want you to fit into it because I know you have a really great uh, character side to you. And I think it'd be really strong for the story and be a lot of fun. So he was all on board. He's like, yeah, wherever you need me. So originally, I, we, we tossed him around in different auditions of like, who could he possibly be? Like, we tried Michael for him. We tried... You, so Do we, we have that? Oh, I, maybe somewhere. somewhere. Maybe I don't when know. he comes back on, we can... Maybe we could try to dig it up, but... Um, <laughs> So maybe some of these also I did off mic. I don't remember exactly yeah. when I was auditioning him. Um, but I remember specifically like Bert just kind of globbed on. It was just a really good fit for him. Um, and we just had to like tune it into the right uh, right amount of gruffness. Because he's one of the few characters in the series that is not his natural voice. And yeah. that's something that I think um, you can get away with if you do it for very few characters. Like the more you do it, the less... The more gimmicky you're sounding, so that's where it's like, Bert was like just one of those ones. It's like you know what, we need a little bit of a characterization in here to do this. Cause I mean, he himself, Scott Marvin, he's a character. He's a great guy, and he's oh just, yeah. He's... You know, without that, it would be a kind of a shell of a character on the yeah. screen. It's like no, Marv puts a lot of himself into Bert, and it's a lot of the fun. And it was a lot of fun writing his lines, cause it was just like. I gotta. I can quote movies and get all creative. Get and, away with it. <laughs> yeah, and like put an entire section of airplane in my show, and I'm like, okay, cool. I don't have to write like half three of these pages. That's fine by me. Casey, why did you not button the bottom of the baby's? Oh, he just that, busted that's out. That's so the 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 poo can fall out when the out of the diaper, and so it's it a, makes a mess. It's a ventilation. Yeah. <laughs> so fun fact, fun fact. Uh, he's not the first Marvin. To be on the show, Scott Marvin. Yes, before Scott Marvin, his son Nico, who plays Tommy, was on the show. <laughs> yep, and we may have him on the show at some point too. That'd be uh, cool. So, he's like a man now. Yeah, yeah, he's all grown up. Yeah, he's, he's like everyone's. Everyone's grown up. They all got beards now, and it's happening down here. So uh, I, I don't know what's happening over here. Uh, just being a baby. We'll, we'll change the diaper. You guys can watch. He's if you haven't learned changed. how to change a diaper, if well, you haven't, the if you haven't like had this. a kid, if you haven't uh, babysat before <laughs> on the <this> show, <laughs> this episode, or maybe hand. next episode, we're going to teach you how to change a diaper. Uh, we're going to go through all the steps. You on Grace. Wiping it. On, on me, that's right. Diaper Wednesday. Uh, type part, diaper Tuesday, I'm sorry. We still have diapers here <laughs> in store, so we're going to learn how to change a diaper. Please and, cut uh, to me right now. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so the first mention of We're Alive is in this episode. We're alive? How dumb is that? That's yeah, I wanted to... Stupid. Yeah, I wanted to, someone to make fun of the title in its own story. Uh-huh. Just because I was like, well, if they're making fun of it, then no one else ever can. <laughs> so it's like, okay, that's, that, that seems sound to me. Um, we one, first... one, one, yeah, one note I had, uh, when they're, <laughs> when they're on the rooftop, uh, that evening and the next morning with Bert, uh, Saul Angel and Bert are on the rooftop, we hear some very persistent, uh, birds. There's a lot of birds and they're very loud. That we, we hear an owl for like three minutes straight. I know. <laughs> this is... <laughs> Uh, actually, I think that's a. I think it might be a dove. Anyway, and but it's the. This is one of the things that makes me cringe, whenever I hear, the old non remaster versions of We're Alive. So yeah, I mean, whoa! Can we? We could tell. We can. Do you want to announce it that we're gonna do anything? I I didn't know that we couldn't. You can go ahead. Yeah, we can. <laughs> um, so um, we're gonna announce. Uh, we have a couple of cool things coming up in the show. Then we're gonna get into lockdown and a, a few more things. Uh, but one of the things that's coming from us is the remastered versions are coming to a podcast channel, the Our Podcast channel. They're going to be coming back in there, and we're actually getting uh, new advertisements inside of there, sort of like a bit of a revitalization. Yep. So those of you who have purchased it and have the remastered versions at home, it's still going to be great. It's still yep. going to be your. It's not taking away from it because those are advertisement free, and it's they don't really have the those are, they don't have the breaks between the episodes. Yeah, and they're ad free. Yeah, so it's really still a, a, a nice version to listen to without the breaks. But one of the things is as we're coming out with lockdown, and new listeners are going to be coming on board, <laughs> and we're listening to some of these really old chapters, especially. <laughs> it's like you're just 
shaking your head like, <laughs> man, we need to have we Bert need to have a to better. Sh- Bert needs to shoot that owl. He needs to pretty much. Cook yeah. It up and so eat we're it. gonna we're gonna go through and and put the uh, the episode like uh, what do you call it? commercial breaks in there and everything and. <laughs> Oh, Commercial break brought to you by ab- babies. Slobber kissies. Slobber um, kissy babies. Get yours today at slobberkissybaby.com. That's <laughs> probably some sort of perverted <laughs> Who's website. Paying you today? I just said slobberkissybaby.com. Okay. No, obviously. I, <laughs> I don't want to know if that's real. Don't tell me it's real, uh, please. Uh, Brad Bradshaw, go ahead, uh, check that out. Let us know. Don't do it, Brad, please. Um, <clears throat> oh, so there's a couple more. There's a couple plants in here for future yeah. things. Yeah. Number Plant, one. There's plants and birds. Plants and birds. Uh, one of them is we got Radon Labs. Can't say anything about that. <laughs> okay. Um, That's, it's a plant. It's a plant. Radon Labs. Pay attention. Um, Pay attention. Someone drilled into Bert's safe that knew what they were doing. Yeah. What's up with that? Don't know. We'll find out later. What? You think um, it's one of the guys at the tower? No, no. We'll find out. Okay. Um, and the other thing is uh, we have... The dogs in the background at night, really, that's a, that, that, that actually is, is one something. of the things I liked yeah. because that's incredibly <clears throat> intentional because right now the wild animals are starting to kind of roam the streets a little bit. And that's something that I never, I didn't get to explore much with World Eye because it's kind of hard to do an audio drama, uh, like a pack of dogs. To make that, the sound effects would be really, really difficult because it's, if anybody's worked with sound effects and things like that and to record dogs, very difficult to do animals because <laughs> especially because... Uh, when you hear this, then they have sound effects libraries, they're all different, and you hear that they're different, so it's really hard to work with, and so animals can be problematic, uh, especially. So, I was glad we ever had a little bit of that, but unfortunately not as much as I wanted. Um, and actually, there is something really cool, is um, one of the inspirations for the title of the book I'm writing about Audi Dramas is in this episode. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, the, the book, the title of the book that I'm working on, which I can sort of announce, there's a lot of announcements today. <laughs> um, is uh, Bombs Always Beep. It's uh, subtitle is uh, Creating uh, Audio Theater for the Mind. Uh, so it's, it's going to be a book about how you create audio dramas, and I'm going to be talking a little bit more on, because uh, I have a, a convention speaking this week at the AWP Writers Convention in LA, so if you'd like to hear more about the book and sort of that background of, of how you create audio dramas from nothing, uh, it's it's kind of a cool. We're focusing on writing for this for this uh, convention, nice. and uh, there's, uh, Fred is coming out. Uh, who makes uh, the cleansed? You might Fred remember Flintstone. him. Fred Flintstone. Fred uh, Flintstone. Fred Gr- uh, Greenhalge. Uh, I, I always pronounce his name wrong, so I apologize, Fred. Greenhalge. Yeah. Greenhalge. Right. Anyway, thank you for saying his name probably wrong three times. Um, but yeah, so that'll be uh, that'll be coming up on Friday. Cool. And so uh, and that's in LA. You're saying? Yeah, that'll be in LA at the LA Convention Center. Uh, I think the tickets are at awpconference.org. I think. Just Google dot awpconference. Org, dot net, dot One of those things. I don't have my laptop here. Uh, I can't really tell you. Uh, could be slobberbabykisses.com. Slobber baby kisses. Slobbery baby kisses. He's All right. Quiet. And he's so uh, yeah, that was an interesting episode. Towers under attack. We left off with that. Yeah. And we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know another, who's died, if anyone's left. The, the sign says we're alive. Who knows? Who knows? Could be untrue. <clears throat> I like the... So these first... Uh, the first episode we recorded in one session. Mm-hmm. Episodes two and three was the second session. The next episode is the third session. And I think by the third session we get Got even it. better. Okay. And getting a little bit more. So I'm really happy to get out of these early episodes that were great at the time, but now, looking back, are a little painful, considering where we go with the series. And this is actually the first <clears throat> episode with Lizzie and Bert. Oh, am I getting handed the baby? Sure, take the baby. I've got the baby. This is the first episode with Lizzie and Bert in it together, and we'll see where that uh, relationship develops and how. And True love. True, yeah. true love, you never know. <laughs> love um, in the battlefield. Diaper, diaper Tuesday. Ah. We got a baby right here. So, yeah. Bert, Lizzie. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> oh, cool. The, the baby has killed him. <laughs> uh, the ba- it has. It's very... I don't know how anyone can get any work done with a baby. I, I will tell you right now, they don't. <laughs> no. No, they don't. And hey, that's where I will take this PSA time to say, men, thank your wives. <laughs> That's it. Why? That's it. Just, just, just thank your wives for what? everything. Okay. 
because a lot of men take care of the babies. I take a look. I take care of him sometimes. Oh, 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 oh. I take, okay, okay, she okay. says. Okay, she says. Oh. Well, true confessional. Right now, the way that we have to have, like have, like organize our lives is I'm so inundated with doing lockdown and the other production stuff that she's having to take care of Augie more full time right full now. Full time. So, yeah. Full time. Full day. Full night. Yeah. So it's it's crazy how. We have to do it right now, but she's basically doing all of the baby stuff, and then I'm helping where I can. So, yeah, it is. It's a lot of work, yeah. but we're we're surviving. We're here. We're alive. <laughs> I'm passing the baby back to you. Window baby. Okay. Window baby. Who ordered a window baby? All right. So, uh, that's the episode. Episode done. What episode do we got next? Done. Nice. We've got. We already mentioned a little bit of we're live. Announcements, a little bit of where live announcements. What about lockdown? What have we got? Let's talk there? lockdown. All right. So those of you who remember us plugging this uh, multiple times, <laughs> um, and I'm so excited to finally release this. Actually, I'm really excited. Tomorrow we'll release it also to the general public. But today, you get this preview. You get to see it here first. first. So those of you who have been waiting to see it, if you're Kickstarter supporters, you've already seen it. Thank you very much. But for those of you who haven't, it doesn't mean you can't be supportive. But here it. Is three, two, one, boom, ta-da! That is our lockdown poster. That is the lockdown poster. Take we your screenshots. Yeah, take your. Well, <clears throat> no, it's, let's, let's not do that. It'll be released. <laughs> it'll be released tomorrow. Don't share it. Let it be the, the people. If you spent the time to come here today, don't be there for the people who didn't spend the time to be here. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. actually, yeah. and also, yeah. we'll release a higher resolution tomorrow that you can save uh, if you'd like to as a desktop or. Uh, we will be doing uh, poster prints. Uh, those should be being made very, very shortly here. Those so, are for the, the Kickstarter backers. Kickstarter backers. And uh, eventually it'll be able to available to those who are trying to order things from the website. But uh, yeah, it'll be pretty cool. Most of the people in the, in the chat our are backers. backers. Yeah, nice. so most people well, have, may have already fantastic. seen it. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm gonna. We can talk a little bit about who's on the poster. Who's on the poster? Yeah. yeah let's bring that this poster is, back this up. is something that we haven't really talked about much with. So, um, starting there on. Who's well, that? hopefully it's your left. Is there's Mark, with the flashlight. He's one of the guards. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Above him, uh, to his. Uh, well, we'll just say above him to the right <laughs> is Gavin. Uh, that's another guard. And then up at the top, the, the last guard is Danny. Danny. Danielle. Um, the big guy in the back in the red jumpsuit, that's Fredo. 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 And then Fredo. going, continuing around the circle over there on the right, we got Chuck on the far right, Jeremy next up. And then in the middle, you got Bogart. And then Jody is right next to him. And then down at the bottom, you have Simeon. Simeon. And then the guy in the back, you might know who that is. Yeah. So. Yeah, so that's the lockdown poster, and that's everyone who on everyone who's on it. And I, I was thinking about telling more about the characters and things, but honestly, one of the cool parts about lockdown is you don't know anything about it. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know who's involved. I kind of love the idea of not giving anybody like a preview. Like they have the yeah. first you 15, the first 15 minutes, minutes, but that doesn't tell you anything <laughs> of what happens in the jail. It only gives you a real a, a little hint. So I love the idea of not, not knowing coming in, and also. Um, this is a bit of a different sort of type of audio drama. This is more of a long form audio drama, means that there's longer scenes. Um, instead of it being broken up into smaller pieces, the scenes are longer, they're more um, developed, and you kind of you carry with the characters a little, little longer in certain portions. So oh, okay. it's really exciting to see how people react to it. It's it's slightly different, but boy, does it sound awesome! Nice. It's really well. Grayson should know because Grayson's there every single day, editing it. Monday through Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> so eight it's, days a week. <laughs> it's uh, it's generally all hands on deck over here at Wayland Productions, and we're probably gonna go home, and I'm gonna edit, and she's gonna go to bed, and I'm gonna edit. Yep, and Grace is gonna go home and edit as well, because we are we have many things to get done b between then. Um, but so, as we yeah. expand and get bigger, we're 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 looking to bring on. Another apprentice who I ran into today. Oh, cool. So, okay. Talked to him. Really excited. Nice. Um, I'm super excited to bring him on board. Not a business meeting. Sorcerer's well, apprentice. We can. We we are so. telling people how we're moving forward, how the business is growing, and cool. Yeah, it's good, awesome. good stuff. Uh, I'd say let's. Uh, what questions we got? Rollo. Nightcat. What yeah. we got? He's. You got to give him a little more warning. Let's. Uh, so. Um, 
Yeah, so lockdown's going to be great. Yeah, it is. It's going to be yeah. fantastic. Yes, it you know is. You what's also going to be great? The release dates. Lockdown. Oh, yeah. You we got the release dates. You didn't interview me, and you didn't let me guest plug. There's, those lines are empty. Uh, no. Yeah, you're not the All right, so, <laughs> so moving right along. Are those permanent? No, you... yeah, well, they're kind of. Oh, I see. They're the black marks. You said oh. release dates. Oh, yeah, release dates. <laughs> okay, well, I, I, I thought you were going to the questions because they were looking like they were preparing <clears throat> over there. They're ready to go. Why don't we talk about the questions and then we'll get the release dates at the Fan, end. I'm That'll doing, be the thing you can I'm doing a fantastic for. job. Everybody, when Tony Ray comes back, you let him know what a great job Grayson did <laughs> as a host. <laughs> don't tell him anything about anything other than, hey, Grayson did a fantastic job. We didn't even know it wasn't Tony because he even had the tattoo, right? Check he out was the tattoo. a beautiful host. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Oh, jeez. Uh, now I know what Tony has to put up with when yeah. I'm sitting there putting on those terrible jokes. Oh, jeez. I'm okay. sorry, Tony. It's oh, okay. man. It's not Tony. so bad. What do we got for questions? Questions. Yeah. Nightcap. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> this question has to do with our episode tonight. So Michael B. Okay. would like to know. Michael B. Michael B. Why would a competition shooter use a 50 cal Desert Eagle? Casey. A what? What's that? Because of the name that's engraved on it that says Shirley. Now, for those of you who are wondering why I'm brandishing a pistol right now, this is actually just a prop. It is an airsoft weapon. Oh, you want to do some zoom-ins? Okay, cool. Uh, it, is a, it is a total prop pistol. This is, uh, we use this for the, the shoot with, uh, with Marv. So you can see it's got, I don't know if you can see it. It's right around there. You can see Shirley. And, uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's, uh, uh, this is the actual size of a 50 caliber pistol, and my hands are huge, and <laughs> it is still a massively, massively large weapon. And it's actually pretty functional, too. Put it in the baby's hands. <laughs> uh, no. Guns so. for babies. It's, uh... Let him chew on it. It's Bert's... Let him chew on it? Is Bert, that what you said? Bert for President 2016 Guns for Babies initiative. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, so it's an airsoft weapon, um, and it's uh, it's pretty pretty accurate. I dig it. And uh, this was a gift to me uh, from Marv. So going back to the cool. question, I, was, did did that answer the question? Why <laughs> would he oh, use that? It's because uh, because the weapon is surely he has a personal connection with the, okay. with the weapon. Um, as to the depth of it, we will find out later through his character. But he has a strong connection with that that weapon. Yeah, and I imagine. Most people listening would know that story down the line. Yeah. So Michael B is just really causing trouble. No, he's not causing As trouble. As usual. <laughs> he's not causing trouble. <laughs> Next question. What do we got, Nightcat? Okay. Joshua Kaiser would like to know, have you recorded Augie for any episodes? No, we haven't had anything with a baby in it, and there's no babies in <laughs> lockdown, so... Uh, except for the baby section of the jail. You forgot... Oh, about the baby yeah, jail. yeah, the Gaga Ward. Yeah, the Gaga Ward. His we got... cousin was recorded for something. Yeah, his cousin was recorded. That's true. Uh, but his cousin, well... His cousin was recorded later. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into that. That's a, that's a whole other story. I'm just saying. There has been a baby. Yeah, there has been a recorded. baby. There has been a baby Wayland. It yeah, just there has been a baby Wayland on the, in the show. <clears throat> um, it, is, it is there. Hopefully it doesn't spoil much, but... Ugh, no. Matt, I'm not too worried about that. Nice. Next question. Okay. So, Cat E would like to know, Casey, have you ever considered taking a chapter, swapping the gender of the characters, just to see how it would change the dynamics? I think that's pretty interesting. That is interesting. Um, I wouldn't mind doing it in like a, uh, a reading setting with new actors <laughs> and things like that. One of the things that I, I, I find really important, especially if you're going to create anything like that, is when you take characters and have them perform other ones, and then like record it it does this really weird thing of like almost it breaks the fourth wall in a way i don't think is good um it's just it's one of the reasons why i didn't particularly like certain characters to do any advertisements because <laughs> i feel like it does break that fourth wall and that's why only certain characters actually did those um so yeah it's one of those things where i would i'd entertain the idea and maybe do it in a fun entertaining setting I but i wouldn't want to record it yeah so and I, I do think um, I do think it is an interesting thing because actually somebody was talking about this uh, with me today about like 
just the they 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 felt like some of the female characters were weaker in the beginning, and I I kind of do agree with that in some sense, but also at the same time, the male characters are equally doing stupid things. Um, like it's it's both sides are 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 I think have their moments of of good times and bad times. So I think it's a, a I think decent. I think if balance. you were to write it today, you probably would have made one of the soldiers a woman. I think I would have. Yeah, I think definitely think I would have. I also think that. Um, me at the time, I learned how to write women a little better. Yeah. Um, I think that's just something that I had to improve over time because my familiar familiarity with the female kind has, you know, improved since then. I have I've lived with one constantly. So. <laughs> constantly. Constantly. I don't not just live with one. She he lives with one constantly. Everybody. I follow yep. him to work. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep in his car. <laughs> Wait, you guys sleep in cars? No, no, no. Just when he's driving. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. take some naps. Just right. I'm always there. Oh, Sometimes in the back, you know. <clears throat> oh, Augie's, Augie doesn't like that answer. And the answer is... What? What's the answer? Poop. Oh, yeah, poop. All right. Poop's his answer for everything. <laughs> Next question. Okay. Next question. So, Mario Verdasca... I oh, th I, I think Mario Verdasca. Uh, do you guys plan to host live events again? And are you getting everyone for a reunion if you do this? Um, right now, we have no reunions <laughs> planned. Uh, maybe in the future, it might be something to look into. But we haven't. One of the things is uh, the cast really has gone separate huge. ways. And that too, yeah. Yeah, like everyone, it's, it's huge. Yeah, it's, it's a huge cast. I mean, we've had 88 characters on the show. So getting everyone together will be definitely hard. Uh, it might be something we could do down the road. Um, maybe a ten-year reunion would be kind of fun, or something like that. Um, I don't know. It's just that's that's a little ways down the road. Um, I think one of the one of the ways we could do that is hopefully if lockdown is successful, and we could build more IPs around We're Alive and do more and more content. Um, and if we do more side stories, some of those old characters might be coming back again. Ooh. So um, <laughs> so if that's the case, then we might actually do that uh, and be All able right. to have more. They'll, the family will still be there in some way. So I don't know, we'll see. It's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of things that are up in the air right now. A lot of um, you know, contingency plans for, for basically to make everything grow and get bigger. So we'll see what pans out. Hopefully it'll go well. Nice. I'd like to do more live events, maybe for something like this. Yeah. Be there, really cool. Well, when we talk about the schedule at the end, uh, of the release schedule, we can definitely talk in particular about maybe a potential upcoming live event. Cool. All right. Okay, we got uh, we got a few more questions. Uh, Anna Marie Murray would like to know: Casey has an actor, being a prima donna, ever <laughs> asked you to rewrite one of their scenes for whatever reason? Never happened. Not not one. I made you rewrite a lot of stuff. Okay, that's <clears throat> she sort of is a producer, so that's different. Um, I, w I was particularly picky about the Lizzie stuff, though. I guess then that's true, and I didn't know it until now. No, so. you tease me about it. Don't pretend you didn't know. Yeah, that's true. But then again, you are, you are, I didn't really consider you as somebody who's, you know, wanted me to change. When, I, when you change the lines, I just think they're general edits. I don't think it's particularly because you want to make your character do no, something different. You no, don't no. do that. It's it usually was, just the way that I talk. Yeah, you wanted to change a, a, a phrase. A yeah, yeah, that's, okay. that's not something because... Um, I pronounce it this way, not this way. Yeah, so that stuff like that. I mean, actors will just do that. They'll just read it the way that they see it in their heads. So it's not like they're rewriting it. They're just performing it the way that they would perform it. Because yeah. so. there's always what's on the page and the one that the actors perform and never the tween shall up or meet. Right. Yep. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Koi Moon would like to know, how many different types of zombies did you make for the show? Can we say that? Um, I don't know if we can. I mean, how many have we heard so far? We've well, heard. Okay, we've heard. I think right now we've gotten to two. But um, we've got like some kind of smart one from Ray Donlin. Like yeah, we have. A, uh, well, we some that are smart. <coughs> yeah. Smart is a the classification because it's not necessarily that he has a tag from Radon. It's that he's wearing something that reflects that he was of smart intelligence. Right, right, right. So. And uh, and things like I don't know, um, if you see like a mechanic, if you see a mechanic or something like that who's like specializes in cars, 
that could be seen as a as a maybe an intelligent role. So maybe they might be smart too. So Ooh. it all depends on on uh, what you see in them. So Bert's testament of what he's talking about is that um, several there were more than one. So yeah. and then so yeah, there's so definitely there's a smart, ones. A smart type. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. A smart type, and what else? Uh, the normal kind. Normal kind. And runners, jumpers. We haven't gotten into any of those yet in the story, so you just spoiled it. <sighs> That's okay. Well, there's some I more kinds that are coming. I made them up, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I think in total there are about seven different kinds that I, I think I created throughout, but some of them are not mentioned, so. Ooh, ever. Not, not mentioned ever. There's, they, they are implied, and they're there in between the lines, and you can kind of see them in a way, but um, they're not you can directly mentioned. Kind of see them with your ears. Remember that, folks. Yeah, your ears have eyeballs. They're not particularly special, but they do something in the story uh -huh. that, that sort of is is uh, native to them. Okay. So, Very cool. Yeah. Maybe when we get to Great those, I'll, I'll talk about that one. We have one more question. Last question. This This one <clears throat> is from a while ago. Nope. Um, but we're finally getting to it. <laughs> so congratulations, Lost Chance. It took us a few weeks to get here. But you guys, do you enjoy other sci-fi or military shows like Battlestar Galactica, Stargate, et cetera, et cetera? Um, okay, so let's see here. So Battlestar Galactica, no. Um, only be Well, this is just my answer. I mean, you guys can answer however you want. Uh, but Battlestar Galactica, no, because I thought it was just a constant Cylon hunt, and it kind of took away from the story for me a lot. It was just a... Uh, who is what, and the, it just did not... Who and what? Yeah, it's just, it didn't have the right recipe for what I thought a good story needed. It just felt very um, writer's hand a lot. <laughs> okay. He's laughing at you. <laughs> um, I liked Stargate the movie. Um, I didn't really follow any of the Stargates after that, so Series I couldn't really comment on that. Um, enjoyable. I, uh, I like some Star Treks, and uh, I like some Star Wars, and love Lord of the Rings, and Harry Potter's like the best, so yeah. You? TV shows? Yeah. Uh, Firefly. Oh, Firefly yeah. is fantastic. That goes without saying. Mm, okay. I don't know. I think everyone needs to say it. Firefly was fantastic, and we need ten more seasons, yeah, right? Yeah, I agree. Ten more seasons. Oh, Buffy? Is that sci-fi? Six, six yeah. in a movie. Buffy is is fantasy? Horror? Yeah, that's yeah. it's fantasy. For sure. Yeah, so. definitely. It's, it's magic and vampires and scare wolves and... Scoobies. Scooby Snacks and Scooby Doos. Um, Sci Fi series. I've, I want to watch Doctor Who, but I haven't watched it yet. Oh, Doctor Who is fantastic. That's it's, what I hear. What's, so, my favorite thing about Doctor Who is even though there's all these changing. The main thing for those who don't watch Doctor Who, the main big thing about Doctor Who is that they can cast anyone as Doctor Who, and it's the new Doctor because he's this alien that regenerates oh. and turns into a different looking person, but he's the same person somewhat, oh. but he has different characteristics. Is that how they get away with it? <clears throat> That's how they get away with it. Uh, but they do it fairly well within the story, and they have these story arcs that span across these multiple doctors oh, that that's tie cool. in. They are mind-blowing. They are absolutely mind-blowing, and I love it. And that's why Doctor Who is fantastic. Although I haven't, I've missed the past, what, two, I haven't seen anything with Peter Capaldi, uh, and yeah, so that's like, what, the last two seasons? I've, I've been a bad Whovian. Oh. Mm -hmm. But, it's yeah, okay. Firefly and Doctor Who are, are up there. Good question. Got us on a rant of something else, but yeah. <laughs> nice. So, uh, now on to last week's contest. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So last week, we asked you... Whose backstory do you want to hear, and why? All right, we got great response from this one, and the answer was, the winner we got was from Jack Jeffers, and he said he wants to know, or he wants to know, yeah, he wants to hear Marcus's backstory, uh, because he wanted to know what it was like in the beginning, uh, while they were fighting off the infected, building the wall at the colony, and know what it was like back then. So Jack Jeffers, thank you for tuning in. Uh, You'll be getting your prize. We'll be contacting you. And for this week, this week's contest is... We've got some writing on here that we may or may not announce. I'm going to leave that up to Casey. So this week's contest. Obviously, I'm Tony Ray. Look at me. I'm Tony Ray. I'm the greatest host ever. Grayson Stone sucks. He's a terrible producer. We like to rag on him. Hashtag and Tony Ray rocks. 
Hashtag Tony Ray rocks. Hashtag cat killer. Uh, hashtag I hate cats. What else uh, does do I do as Tony Ray? Uh, hashtag check out my B tattoo. Kaboom. Ugh. There's like gonna be no no room for comments after these hashtags. Anyway, all right. To this week's contest, <laughs> who wore it better? We got Tony Ray's B tattoo. Look at that. That's Tony Ray's B tattoo. It's fantastic B tattoo. And we got my B tattoo. Look at that B tattoo. Oh, that's really close. You drew that with a Sharpie, too. I dude. drew that with a Sharpie. So <laughs> let us know uh, on Facebook or Twitter. Let us know who you think wore the tattoo better. Don't forget the hashtag, hashtag APT2C, which is short for Apartment 2C. If you don't include that, you don't get entered because obviously we want more people to find out about us and spread the word. The, the prize. That's a great question. So the prize is. Ba -da -da -da. Chapter 3 disc, all by itself. It's not a disc set, it's just Chapter 3 remastered disc. We'll get it signed by the three of us here and maybe the next person who's in here next week if you want that. And of course, Casey's notes from this week. Uh. Whoa, Casey's notes! I did a doodle this time. And he drew a doodle. <laughs> Let's see what that doodle is. It kind of looks like... He draws, it's like his only thing. He draws it all the hey. time. He's got hey. this cat. <laughs> Don't don't mac don't mac on my this, cat. This looks like uh, the cat from Opus. What's that cat? Ack, I think his name is. What's, Mr. Holland. I made that in like 1995. I developed that character in like. Oh, the third I'm sure this grade. cat has been around since like 90 early. Oh, 90s. is it? Oh. Maybe. Well, Who knows? I, I don't think it's the same. Anyway, Casey's notes plus chapter three, and it's got a picture of Bert with Shirley. Look at that. Looks just like the gun here that we got. Where's that gun? Uh, on the floor here. Oh, on the floor. Let okay. Put, let me get the baby to Blair, and then I'll. Jeez. <laughs> there you go. You're not getting the gun. No, you're not getting the gun. <laughs> no. You can don't, see. Don't point it towards the child. <laughs> you can see the, the, the things in there. Oh, but it's okay to point it at me. I guess. You get, over my child at this point. So, yes. <laughs> here we go. Bert's gun, not in the drawing. Chapter three CD is. Yeah. Uh, that's all right. That's cool. it. So. Any other announcements? Uh, uh, yeah, you yeah so have? we got other announcements. So people want to find out what the <clears throat> release dates are for things, and because I'm not going to get them wrong on the announcement here. So uh, the release date coming up for lockdown, because it's March 29th, and this will be announced tomorrow, and we'll have it on the site and everything. So uh, the release date for lockdown is officially on April 25th. April 25th, and what Monday, day is it? Monday, April 25th. And then for the Kickstarters, it's coming a week early on April 19th. April 19th. So that is part one, and then the subsequent releases of part two, three, four, are all the weeks after that. So if you're a Kickstarter, you actually get the uh, episodes on Tuesdays. So on the 19th of May, you'll get your first part one. The 26th of May, you'll get part two. The twenty or the third of uh, May, you'll get of part May three. Of May or March? Or yeah, it's May. May. Part one. Third of May, you'll get part three. Oh, okay. I heard part one. Oh yeah, no. Part three and then part four is on the tenth, and then uh, so basically the great thing about that is, um, and the reason why it's done that way is so that the Kickstarters get it on the Tuesday, and then if you think about it, the next people get it on the Monday. That means people can theorize on that Monday with people before the next episode comes out. Nice. So there's some community still, people who have the Kickstarter uh, campaign and know that they get it a week earlier, they still get to have one day overlap to communicate with the fans and have fun with it. So the Mondays are going to blow up and be really fun for everybody, which will be a blast. So um, the reason we do that is because we would love the social interaction of everybody for the show. Yeah. We want to make sure that people actively participate in discussions because there's a lot of things that are hidden in lockdown. I gotta say this over and over again. There's a <laughs> lot of things hidden in lockdown. There is, and even for those of you who have friends who are Kickstarter backers and who have babies, they would like to cry. Well, that's He's a whole nother hungry. thing. But anyone who can, anyone watching We're Live or Lockdown, uh, you won't get lost if you haven't listened to We're Live. So yeah, whether no, or not it's... you've listened to We're Live, you're gonna be able to follow Lockdown without a problem. Yeah. Well, so, uh, well, I still got one, a uh, couple more things to say, but he's just, uh, he's just getting fussy. Hey, buddy. It's his, it's his feeding time. So we're gonna keep on going with a, yeah. uh, a couple more announcements here, as the baby is, is Goodbye, baby. soothed away. Yeah. Goodbye, baby. Wah. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so that schedule plays perfectly all the way up until the last episode. So the last episode is treated as slightly different because, um, what? 
What do you mean? I wasn't around the camera. Oh, okay. Oh, that's not a problem. They're they're all enthralled right now with uh, with this huge <laughs> announcement. Um, so we take a week off. Uh, so June, so May thirtieth is Memorial Day. So that day we're not releasing anything uh, because it's Memorial Day. But the idea is that on uh, what is it June third. We're thinking about doing possibly some sort of live event. We might be able to do it here from 2C, uh-huh. uh, doing something live. Because uh, one of the ideas is uh, we want to find a way that the Kickstarter backers can can see the, the finale. Um, so we might do an, an in-person event, and Kickstarter backers are automatically invited. We're figuring it out. We're gonna. It's one of those things where we're focusing on the production, and then once we start getting things released and things like that, uh, we're going to get... A little bit more grasp on what we're going to do for the very finale of cool. of lockdown, but right now the tentative plan is uh, June third will be the release of the Kickstarter uh, episode, and then on the sixth of June would be the release of the episodes to the general public. So that one has a shorter window for release, but it's one of those things where uh, you know keeping the ending from the the fans. I mean, it's, there's going to be a lot of people wanting to talk about it, so keeping those dates closer together might just behoove everybody, and that way the Kickstarter backers also get it early. Makes everyone happy. Yeah. Nice. So that's sort of the plan. Um, things, th- I don't think things are going to change for that. Where the, it's a live event, the very ending, the the finale thing will, will be a little tricky. But we'll have more detailed announcements. I'll have a nice little calendar up showing the release dates. We'll put that out tomorrow. Uh, the other announcement that I have, and I suppose I can come closer to you now. Oh. I can I can scoot on in my way in over here and. Well, it's still a gigantic couch without anybody here. But anyway, um, so the next announcement that I have is something that we were able to release last week. And you can go up and pull up the, the press release if you'd like. Um, that special project that I've been talking about for weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, uh, working on the graphic? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So go on. Oh, sorry. So the, the project we're working on, we can finally announce it. It's uh, a very, very big audio drama coming up. Um, so this is that 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 big project that I've been mentioning for a while. It's the it's part of the reason why I'm part of uh, Paradigm now. Um, and it is so we have Lawrence Fishburne and Lorenz Tate and uh, Josh Olson, who is an Academy Award nominated writer. Ooh. Um, so we have a lot of people involved in this project. Very, very great, uh, great story coming up. It's called Policy Kings. I can't talk a whole lot about it. Uh, Grayson might be involved. I can't say about that, but we'll, we'll, all the details will come in time. But the great thing is uh, they're relying on Wayland Productions to do handle the production side of this uh, audio drama. So we are sort of in... Uh, positioning ourselves in very good ground because we audio like with the book and everything we're um, I, I especially am just doubling down on the medium altogether because I really think that with the right motivation and with the right direction there'll be a lot more uh, entertainment and it can really become something that is something special because like Audio dramas in general, a lot of people kind of dismiss them and they don't think of them as very like powerful. But really, it's the only form of entertainment that you have that you can really relax your eyes other than music. I mean, yeah, you can listen <laughs> to some of the things and music can, is, is good and all, but it's one of those few things that you can actually fill in. You're given a good amount of the story. You get to fill in your own with imagination, yeah. but the story is presented to you mostly. Like a book is very imaginative. You have to imagine everything and they give you something. You have to think of the voices and stuff. We give you a little bit more of the picture. And so it's, a, it's, a, it's like a halfway point between film and books. And I think it's something that uh, a lot of people really love and enjoy. Obviously, we have fans of the medium here. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I think we that, hope. that, well, of course. <laughs> yeah, and I, I really think that this is going to be progressively just getting bigger and bigger. I mean, we've seen uh, Serial, and there's a whole bunch of new audio dramas that have hit the yep. market. We've we've inspired welcome a lot to, of them. Welcome to Night Vale is, well, I mean, they're, they're huge, and mm-hmm. Serial obviously is huge. There's a and lot of, yeah, there's a lot of entertainment out there right now, and I think that uh, if we can position ourselves in the right way, we could be at the forefront of that, that movement. So we'll see what happens. Your guys' support and, you know. Spreading the word and yeah. word of mouth and... Yeah, even things like the, one of the reasons we do Apartment 2C is be able to have an, another way of communicating with the fans and filling in all these really cool details that are happening. So your support is greatly, uh, greatly appreciated. Yeah. So every week, you know where to find us. We're here, 7.30 p.m. 
youtube.com slash user slash Waylon Prod slash live. How many slashes is that? That's or, quite a few. Or we're alive.com forward slash spell out apartment 2C. That's a quick link if you're, if you're looking for it. There you go. We're alive.com slash apartment 2C. Yeah, spell it out. Spell it out. And uh, it'll go right to, uh, right to a landing page that'll take you to where you need to go. Nice. A little uh, bit quicker. So don't forget, you want to subscribe to us. Check us out on Facebook. Uh, that's facebook.com slash, I believe, zombie podcast. And we're on Twitter as well, at We're Alive. Uh, my name is Tony Ray. You can send me any questions if you... Did you, didn't you just said Tony Ray, and then you pointed down. Yeah, yeah, because my, cause my... You see my, uh, hash, my at sign? Oh, 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 down there. Okay, I thought you were like, guy, Tony Ray, or like that. that. That I thought it was that kind of pointing down. No? This is, this is a very mature... It was, it was more like Casey. that? Okay, all right, cool. I'm just checking. Casey, this is a very mature... High class show, okay? We don't do anything silly. We don't do anything. We don't make dick jokes, Casey Whalen. You know what, Grayson? I know we don't do two things that are things that are too silly in this show, but there's always those occasions where you know seriousness just doesn't have to be there all the time. So I totally, totally understand what you're saying. Thank you. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for being reasonable. Yeah. This is a very serious show. I'm Tony Ray. If you have any questions you didn't get to ask on uh, the show live, you can tweet at us, at Tony Ray, at Waylon Prod, uh, at Harry Waylon Prod. Uh, oh, God, that's probably something, too. Yeah, let's not go there. You're like, uh, you're like plugging secret porn sites right now, unfortunately. No, I, like I said, we're very serious. Tony, Tony, we're doing just fine without you, buddy. And uh, don't forget... <laughs> Contest this week. Who's got the better B? Who wore it better? Me or Tony Ray? Or should I say Tony Ray or the other Tony Ray? Who will be the winner? Find Enter, out next week. Yep. And uh, we'll see you next time on Apartment 2C, where we definitely are serious all the time, 100%, not joking around ever. I wonder if we could play video games on this show. We may as well just make a Twitch stream. Yeah.